Hey, what's going on everyone? I appreciate y'all coming here and checking out this Sons of the Forest video. In this one, I'm going to be showing y'all 20 features that you might have not known about in the game. Hopefully y'all find this enjoyable, and if you do, consider taking a little bit of your time and leaving a like on it. The support is greatly appreciated. As always, that's totally up to you. Just leave a reminder here in the beginning. But yeah, let's go ahead and get into all of these. The first one I'm going to be going over is how you can burn demons with the cross. <laughs> As you can see here, check this out. This is something that you might have not known that you could do in the game with this item. Unfortunately, you can't burn the mutants. This only works against the demons. And you start encountering these basically at the end of the game. I gotta say, the cross is extremely powerful against these foes. And you find tons of them down here. It's definitely a useful item. In case you don't know where to get this, all you gotta do is head to this cave here on the map, as you can see. This is the cave where you find the rope gun at, but this is an item you could easily pass up within here. It's near the beginning of the cave though, I will say. You can see the shadow of it at this part of the cave, and yeah, if you head over here, this is where you can pick it up at. Now, like I mentioned before, though, this isn't effective on the mutants. Sometimes they may act a little scared of it when you use it, but it does nothing to them. All right, so for this next feature that I want to show you all that you probably didn't know is what happens if you make a fire while inside a bunker. As you can see, here is what happens. Yeah, the alarm system goes off as well as the sprinkler system. This is awesome. Unfortunately, the fire doesn't get put out though from the sprinkler system, but nonetheless, a neat little thing the developers added in. This happens pretty much inside every bunker around in the game. There are sprinkler systems that were installed in them in case of a fire emergency. Alright, so this next feature that I want to show y'all is how to make a stick defense. This is really easy and very beneficial against intruders. All you gotta do is, well, first off, gather some sticks, and then once you got some sticks, you go over to where you want to set these up at, and look down at the ground, and while you're looking at the ground, you want to make sure it's not the symbol that indicates to break the sticks to make a fire. You want to make sure it's a circle here. This will indicate that you're going to stab the stick in the ground. So yeah, go ahead and do that as many times as you want. And once you got what you want set up, the next part you gotta do to make them deadly is just go up to them with an ax. As you can see, an arrow will be pointing off the top of the stick. This will indicate which direction the stick will be pointing at. So before using your ax on it, make sure you get it in the right direction you want it. And yeah, once you got it in the right direction you want it, go ahead and use your ax on it. And as you can see, they will become a spear pointed outward. Yeah, and they can be deadly for intruders. I'll go ahead and use myself as an example running into them. And they hurt. This will definitely help against intruders at your base. You could surround these around your base. I just set them up like this just to show you how it works for an example. Also keep in mind once they are used like someone hits them and hurts themselves, you will have to place more. Anyways, this next thing that I want to show you all is how you can make Virginia your companion. It can be kind of tricky to make her your companion, but in case you didn't know, all you got to do when you do find her, which by the way, she's pretty random to discover. A lot of people have discovered her just by her approaching the person while they're just sitting there building their base or something. I found her at this location here near the water. But yeah, like I mentioned, she's pretty random to find, but once you do discover her, uh, she will act sketched out, as some of you may know, and how you can get her to warm up to you is just by keeping your distance and standing still. And also, make sure not to have any weapons out or anything, just don't seem hostile with her at all, and don't chase her too when she runs off. I mean, you can kind of follow her at a distance, but don't like chase her down and try to get all up in her personal space. Kind of keep your distance from her and eventually she will warm up how you know she's starting to warm up to you is she'll start bringing you things such as like herbs berries and fish and whatnot and that's how you know she's about to become your companion which is pretty awesome 
and once she does become your companion, she doesn't stop bringing you things. She'll continue to bring you herbs, berries, fish, and even supplies like wood. It's pretty convenient. She's definitely beneficial to have as a teammate. Now, another feature that I wanted to get into is how you can give Virginia weapons and a tracking device so you can, you know, track her on the map, just like how you can with Kelvin. He has the tracking device on him too. As you can see, you can load her up with a shotgun and a pistol. And she like has aimbot walking around. She is extremely deadly, very accurate with her shots. Those three arms come in handy with carrying multiple weapons. And yeah, you won't have to worry about losing track of her too when you have the tracking device on her. And you can find the tracking devices at the purple indicators on the map. They're pretty easy to locate. Anyways, for this next feature I'll be showing y'all is how you can command Kelvin to pick up the radio and follow you around with it. <laughs> this is a way where you can literally have music playing wherever you want to go throughout the island. This is also a way where you can easily take the radio back to your base. Check this out. Pretty awesome. But uh, anyways, this next feature that I want to show you all is how Virginia can start dancing when she's around a radio. As you can see here, she'll literally start jamming out to whatever's playing. And if you turn off the radio, she'll stop dancing and give you a thumbs up. Pretty neat little feature in the game that you might have missed. Anyways, another beneficial feature to know about with Virginia is how she'll lead you to specific things that are nearby. She'll end up giving this motion here, as in, follow me, and when you do follow her, as you can see for an example for this video, she led me to this campsite here, and there's a bunch of goodies around that I can loot at this place, and not to mention you can get the modern axe also from here. Now technically she won't always lead you to goodies that you can loot that are nearby. She may lead you to like a point of interest that's nearby, like a cannibal campsite or something. But nonetheless, this is something pretty interesting to know about with Virginia. If she's saying follow me, follow her, because she's going to lead you to something interesting. Could be some goodies that you can loot, or it could be a part of the main story, like she could lead you to the cave that has like the rope gun that you need for zip lines or something. You never know. She'll just lead you to specific places that are nearby that you might miss. This next feature that you might have not known is how Virginia has a reaction to Kelvin dying. Check this out. <laughs> Yeah, the developers added a reaction with Virginia if Kelvin dies on your team while she's your companion. Pretty neat. Anyways, another feature that you might have not known with Virginia is how you can give her different outfits to wear. She doesn't technically have to wear her default one. As you can see here for an example, I gave her the camouflage suit to wear. You can give her outfits just by going up to her and holding an E to interact with her. Just like how you would give her weapons and a tracking device. Yeah, there's a few outfits that you can find around the island for her. Which, by the way, you can find the camouflage suit located right here on the beach, near the beach crash site. It'll be located within this canoe here. Anyways, this next feature that you might have not known is how Kelvin has special outfits that you can give him. Like for an example here, I gave him the leather jacket outfit to wear. 
This is what it looks like on them. Which, by the way, you can find this outfit in the cave where you find the rebreather and stun gun at. This is the cave right by where the helicopter sometimes crashes at on the beach. Yeah, inside this cave, you can find the leather jacket right by where you find the stun gun within here. I'll go ahead and show you all where exactly this is located at. Just for those of you that are curious. Just go ahead and take the route that I take within here. I'm going to go ahead and speed this up a little bit. Feel free to skip to the next feature by using the timestamps provided if you already know where this is located at. Yeah, it'll be located right up here, once again, right by where you can find the stun gun. Anyways, this next thing that I want to show you all is how you can command Kelvin to fish. If you're near some water, as you can see here, you can give him the command to fish for you. This is something that you might have not known about because you have to be near water for this to happen. Same with the radio. You have to be near a radio for you to be able to command him to go pick up the radio and follow you around with it this is pretty awesome and he'll continue fishing too he won't just stop after he catches one fish this will definitely help you stock up on food anyways this next thing that I want to show you all is how you can zoom in and out on your map this is extremely beneficial and I've seen quite a few people questioning how do I zoom in and out on the map on my previous tutorials I've made over Sons of the Forest. And yeah, how you do this is just by clicking in the mouse wheel. As you can see, you can zoom all the way out or zoom all the way in. Definitely handy to know this. Anyways, this next feature is also beneficial to know and that is how to dismantle your tent easily. All you gotta do is just go up to it and hold C. As you can see, it'll just dismantle it so you'll be able to move it to another location easily. You can also just break it by attacking it too and picking up the tarp, but this is a feature that you might have not known that you could do to dismantle your tent. Anyways, this next feature is how you can easily get out items from your backpack without actually going into your inventory. If you hold in I, as you can see here, you'll pull your backpack out where you can actually just see the backpack as well as your surroundings still, and you can just select whatever you're wanting to get out from here. This is another pretty handy feature to know about. Easy way to get items out of your inventory that you're wanting. Anyways, this next thing that I want to show you all is how you can make a torch. This is a beneficial light source to have when going through caves. It's a little better than a lighter, in my opinion. And all you got to have is a stick and cloth. Once you have those, as you can see, you can combine them. And yeah, once you combine them, you're able to light the cloth on the stick to make a torch. Pretty handy. It also can be used as a decent weapon, too. It can catch enemies on fire. Alright, so this next feature I wanted to get into is the 3D printer that's in the game. This is something that you can find in a few places around. One location specifically where you can find it at is where you retrieve the maintenance key card, as you can see right here on the map. Once over here, you'll have to use the shovel to dig so you can go down into the bunker where the maintenance key card is located at. And yeah, right around where the key card is down here on the desk, you can also find the 3D printer. And with this, you can actually 3D print quite a few things. You can 3D print some arrows. You can 3D print a flask that you can store water in to drink from. You can also 3D print a mask, grappling hooks, tech mesh, and a sled. Yeah, <laughs> a freaking sled. Which this sled requires a lot of printer resin to print, to use. Which, by the way, how you are able to 3D print is by using printer resin, which you can find the resin randomly around, like inside loot containers or just randomly placed around where you can pick it up. Like, for example, you can find some resin right here within this bunker on this shelf. But, yeah, anyways, the next feature that I wanted to get into is how you are able to sled in the game. This is a way to travel around faster and just to have a bit of fun too. Like you could set yourself up where you go down a hill 
and ramp. Or you just want to sled down the mountain or something. As you can see, for example, check this out. Yeah, it's a lot of fun and you go extremely fast. I recommend if you do try this as a tip to clear out some trees for your path on the way down so you don't run into any of them to slow down your momentum. You could race your buddies for some fun or something in the game. Or once again, this is just a way to travel around faster. Just sled down hills. And remember, how you get the sled is from the 3D printer. For this next feature I'll be showing y'all is how you can feed the sharks. All you gotta do is just throw raw meat in the water around where the shark is located at and as you can see eventually the shark will go and eat it and when it does it actually jumps out of the water and everything unfortunately this shark glitched out when it did it because there's not a lot of room going on around in here this is where you get the rebreather either way a neat feature the developers add in that you might have not known about anyways for this next one I'll be showing y'all is how you can swim faster if you have the wetsuit on which is for swimming you can actually swim faster this suit also comes with flippers too. Pretty neat feature the developers added with this suit, how we can swim faster with it. Makes it feel more real. Because after all, it is meant for swimming. Speaking of real, a downfall while wearing this is you walk and run slower with it because you have flippers on while wearing this suit. So it makes sense. But nonetheless, an awesome suit to have, especially if you want to swim faster in the game. This is something you might have not known about. Which, by the way, in case you want to know where to get this suit at, it's located in the cave where you can find the shovel. You are going to need the rope gun as well as the rebreather to get to this outfit. But yeah, it'll be located right here on the map in case you don't know where the cave is located at that has the shovel in it. Once you get over to this cave, the outfit isn't too far within it. Just take the route that I take within here. You're going to have to use the rope gun right here. And then you'll come to this large body of water. Just dive down into it. This is where the rebreather is going to come in handy at. Because you are going to have to dive pretty deep and head through this cave system here. And yeah, once you resurface over here, this is around where you can find the suit at. This footage is sped up, by the way, for your convenience. In case you're wondering how I'm swimming so fast without the wetsuit even on. As you can see, it'll be located right here. This is something you could easily pass in the game. Definitely a beneficial outfit to have. But yeah, there you guys have it, everyone. 20 features that you might have not known about in Sons of the Forest. This took a while to compile together. Hopefully you all found this video enjoyable and you learned something new from this video. If you know of any features that I didn't cover in this video, feel free to share them in the comments. I may get around to making another video like this sharing even more features. But yeah, I guess that's our wrapping up this video. As a reminder here in the end, if you did find this enjoyable, consider taking a little bit of your time and leaving a like on it. The support is greatly appreciated. As always, that's totally up to you. Just leave a reminder here in the end. I'm out of here though. Thanks for taking the time, watching, and listening. Until next time, peace.